Good evening on this Thursday, the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. I pray that God has blessed you today. And I pray that God will continue to bless you in the coming days that are left in the month of December of 2015. And I pray that the upcoming year is a very good and prosperous new year for you and your family. Friend, I, I want to let you know, I want to tell you that uh, there is just so much going on in our world today that is against God, that's against Jesus Christ. There was a time when people reverenced God very greatly. There was a great reverence for God. There was a time when there was a great reverence for Jesus Christ. A time that there was a reverence for God's house, a reverence for God's ministers, and that, that day and hour is long gone. There was a time that if you went to see anyone on a Sunday, you'd better go after church time. Because if you went during church time, chances were, unless they were very old and unable to get out, you wouldn't find them at home. They could be found in the house of God. But nowadays, chances are, unless a person is a minister or unless they are a teacher or in a choir or have a singing group, a quartet, or what have you, chances are they're going to be in the house of God. Unless, like I said, unless they're too elderly to get out and travel or unless they're very sick or they just don't have a way of getting around. But there are people that just could care less about going to the house of God. They could care less about serving God. And I can say along with Paul, even in Paul's day, Paul made the statement, and such were some of you. I can make that statement today. Some of you that served God, there was a time those were some of you. You didn't have respect for God. You didn't have reverence for God. You didn't have reverence for the house of God. You didn't have reverence for the servants of God. You didn't have reverence for the ministers of the gospel. But something changed. God got a hold of you. You see, no matter who you are today, no matter what religion you claim to have, God, you, you were actually born to serve the maker of heaven and earth, the maker of this whole universe. God spoke. He just spoke. And the heavens were formed. The stars, the earth, the sun, the moon, all of the planets. He didn't have to lift his hand to do anything. If I do anything, I have to take my hand and determine that I'm going to do it. I have to turn this computer on. I have to turn this camera on. If I want to record something and put it on the internet. I have to get in front of this camera. And that takes effort on my part. The only thing God had to do was speak the word. And it was done. Friend, that very God of heaven, the very Lord of glory, came to this earth. Isaiah had prophesied it years and years and years before it actually happened. He said a virgin would conceive 
and bring forth a child. And she did. That virgin's name, and, and I've seen it. I've seen it recorded as a young woman. Friend, there are a lot of young women that are not virgins. Virgins are in a completely different category. They've never even touched a man other than maybe shake his hand or maybe kiss him on the cheek or something like that. They've had no intimate relationship with a man. And friend, that was the criteria that the scripture and the prophecy and the scripture call for. And that is the criteria that Mary, or in Hebrew, Miriam, met. She was a virgin, not just a young girl, not just a young woman. She was a virgin, a daughter of Abraham, a descendant of Abraham, a descendant of Judah matter-of-factly, because that was what was called for. She was a descendant of David. That was what was called for. I myself am also a descendant of David. I never went to synagogue. I never went to a synagogue. I would probably be thrown out of a synagogue because I am a Christian unless it was a Messianic synagogue. In a Messianic synagogue, they believed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the promised deliverer. He came to deliver his people from their sins. And that's exactly what he did. Up until Jesus died on Calvary, there had to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people. But when Jesus went to Calvary, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, it's right there in the book of Matthew, he was Emmanuel, God with us. That's what it means. And that's what he was. God with us. Emmanuel. And friend, Christmas, we celebrate and, and we recognize the 25th day of December as Christmas as the day of Christ's birth. Now, I don't know that he was born on the 25th of December. He could have been born on the 26th of August, for all I know. Or, for that matter, he could have been born on the 25th day of April, for all I know. But the fact remains, he was born. And December the 25th, and if you want to look at it, and call it Old Christmas, January the 6th, is the date that the church celebrates, and I'm talking about the whole Christian church, Protestant or Catholic, or even Messianic. His birth is remembered, his birth is celebrated on the 25th day of December. Or some people still celebrate old Christmas. But the fact is, Jesus came. God in the flesh. He never knew any sin. And he lived a sinless life. He went about healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead. Not only did he stand at Lazarus' tomb and say, Lazarus, come forth. He stopped the funeral procession. A woman had lost her only son. As they were bringing the, the body through the streets, taking it to be buried, he walked up 
and I can just almost see him touch what they were bearing in the body. They, they didn't have it in a coffin. It was just laying on I don't I can't even remember the name of it. Cortez, I guess, is what it's called. They stopped. Jesus stopped them and he walked up and I can almost imagine seeing him just walk over and touch the thing that they were carrying that young man on. And that young man came back to life. And that wasn't the only incident. There was a man whose daughter was dying and he had went to Jesus to get Jesus to come and maybe heal her. But they came to where the man was there with Jesus and they told him, don't trouble the master any longer. She's dead. Jesus went put everybody out. Everybody was weeping and wailing and crying because the young child had died. Jesus went in to where she was lying there dead and said, Talitha kumi, which being interpreted is, is damsel arise. And she did. That's exactly what she did. She arose. That birth there on Christmas Eve, that birth, and I imagine it was sometime on over past midnight on Christmas morning before daylight, but that gift that was delivered there in that, that manger by Mary. That gift was the greatest gift that has ever been given to mankind. And friend, if you don't know Jesus today, I do not know of any better day, any better time, any better hour to ask him to forgive you of your sins than right now. Won't you come to him today? Won't you come to him on this Christmas Eve, he loved you enough to die for you, to pay the price that you and I owe for our sins. Turn to him today while you can. Friend, tomorrow might be too late. I had a very good friend that I hadn't seen in probably 20 years that got deathly sick and had to be put in the hospital. He had fluid building up. They were going to do dialysis on him. And they discovered that his heart was so weak that they couldn't even do dialysis. So they sent him right back home. Well, on Tuesday, he passed away. Monday. Monday, Monday, excuse me. Monday, he passed away. Friend, you never know. You never know when death will come knocking on your door. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, I want to pray for you. And then I'm going to let you go. And I pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. Spend some time with your family. Spend as much time as you possibly can. Because next Christmas, either they or you may not be here and spend some time reflecting on the fact that Jesus is indeed the reason for what we call Christmas and the Christmas season. It's not just about Santa Claus. Nicholas was a great man, a bishop of Smyrna in the old in, in the early church, in the 4th century, he was bishop 
of Smyrna, I believe it was. It was either Smyrna or Myra. Might have been Myra. My mind's my mind's giving me some difficulty right now. It it was either Myra or Smyrna. But Nicholas was bishop of the church. There were some daughters that didn't have enough money for their dowry to get married. Nicholas found out about it. He left three bags of gold through the window into their bedrooms. No one knew it until after it was said and done. And friend, he is the one who Santa Claus is patterned after. But Christmas isn't all about Santa Claus. It's not all about Rudolph. It's not all about Frosty the Snowman. It's about Jesus. All right, let me pray. Father God, I come to you, Lord, once more today, Lord, in behalf, Lord, of each and every one under the sound of my voice, Lord. Father, I pray for them, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would bless them, Lord. I pray that you would be with them this day, Lord, this Christmas Eve, Lord. I pray that you would be with their families, Lord. Father, comfort them, Lord, those that are saddened right now at the loss of a loved one. Father, be with them and comfort their hearts. Those who are sick, Lord, even nigh at the point of death, Lord, I pray for them this morning, Lord. If they can be healed, Lord, by your power and by your sacred touch, touch them, O oh God. Father, those, Lord, that need salvation today, God, I pray, Lord, that you would convict their hearts, Lord, by the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Those that are near eternity undone without you, Lord, please, Lord, speak to them one more time, dear Jesus, and allow them to get things squared up with you and make things right before it's eternally too late. Father, forgive me of my sins, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. And Father, I will be cleansed, Lord, Father, wash me in your blood, Lord, and my sins will be as white as snow. They will be forgiven, and I will be made the righteousness of God. Father, Lord, I ask you, God, to touch, Lord. I ask you to touch my sister-in-law, touch Larry Cosby, Lord, also Jim Pierce, God, <coughs> fail more, Lord. Father, there are many more, Lord. Perry Bryant, God, touch him, Lord. And Father, others, Lord, whom I've not mentioned, Lord, that are in need of prayer, God. You know who they are without me mentioning them, Lord. And Father, I ask you to do far above anything I could ask or think and touch them, Lord. Heal them by your power and by your word and by your blood, which was shed for not only our sins, but for our healing, Lord. Father, now I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory for all that you do. In your almighty name, Jesus. Amen. All right, my friend. I may speak to you again tomorrow. I may not. I hope that maybe I'll say a few things to you tomorrow. So just in case I don't, I wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and if you've had a birthday or an anniversary this week, I pray that you've had a wonderful birthday and a very happy anniversary. So until we speak again, may God richly bless you as my prayer. In Jesus' name, bye-bye for now.